your source for everything paranormal. Para Throughout the ages, history has been altered by word of mouth and the misrepresentation of those who might not have been present when some of the world's most significant events took place. Channelers Barry and Connie Strom bring through the spirits of those who actually witnessed or took part in these historical events and lets them tell their stories in their own words. Welcome to Channeling History, and now, here are your hosts, Barry and Connie Strong. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Channeling History. As you may know by now, we're the only show where we speak to the souls that made things happen, and we're brought to you every Sunday on the Parax Radio Network. This week is very special, because believe it or not, we are celebrating our first anniversary of bringing you the show. It's hard to believe that we've been doing this 52 times, but and it is a fact, and here we are. I'm Barry Strom, your host, and I will be doing the channeling tonight. And I'm Connie Strom, and I would like to thank you for tuning in to our show tonight. We will be celebrating our anniversary by interviewing the spirit of an amazing Greek philosopher, Aristotle. His mind created a standard for multiple subjects, such as philosophy, metaphysics, biology, ethics, and much more. He will be answering some very interesting questions. Our chat room here at Para-X is open and we welcome your questions. We do have a list of prepared questions, but we prefer to use yours when you're, since you're listening. We always try to give a small disclaimer, uh, because no matter what we say, there's going to be somebody that's going to disagree with it. So anyway, we have no idea what the spirit is going to say and that we want everyone to understand that the opinions or statements that we voice on our show are the channeled words of the spirits and do not necessarily reflect our opinions those of the Parax network or of our sponsors last week we had a really interesting interview with the famous french emperor and military leader napoleon bonaparte he answered a lot of questions about his life and loves all of our past shows are available for download on Podomatic.com and to view on our YouTube channel. Please tell your friends about us so we can continue to grow our listeners. Tonight, you're going to have the unique opportunity to submit questions to one of the most famous literary individuals that ever walked the earth. Uh, we're hoping that you take advantage of it because it's not going to be every day of your life that you're going to be able to ask Aristotle questions. Please submit them through the Para-X chat room. All of our previous shows are available on our YouTube channel. That's in the name of Barry Strom. And Podomatic.com under the name of Channeling History, where you can download them or just listen for free. It's also available on iTunes, Spotify, and most of the other popular platforms. When we begin our channeling tonight, I will ask the questions and Barry will answer the questions in the words of our guest. As you're all probably well aware, we always start off with a prayer of protection. We all know that the evil is out there, and once we open these channels to the other side, we don't want uh, evil energy sneaking through and messing things up for all of us. So anyway, Connie, say the prayer, and we'll begin to channel with Aristotle. God, please grant us your wisdom and protection. Grant us the knowledge that we can handle and keep us safe from all things that will harm us. Keep the messages positive and pure love. Keep us safe from our egos. We ask these things in the light of the seen, the unseen, and the honesty of God. Okay, Connie, why don't we get started with the questions? We know that our guest is here with us. Yes, welcome Aristotle. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, would you like to begin with a message? Absolutely. In my time, I never passed up an opportunity to speak to the people. Of course, I never had all the electronic gear that you folks have now. We would just simply stand on a pedestal and we would speak as loudly as we could. Obviously, things are a lot different now. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak to others. After all, I haven't been able to talk in person for over 2,500 years. It does seem like a long time. So, anyway, 
I know that you have a bunch of questions made up for me. Well, so why don't we just begin? Sounds like a plan. Uh, have you lived any lifetimes since your time as Aristotle? Yes. I have reincarnated three different times since my life as Aristotle. I came back when Jesus was walking the earth, and I was a follower of his, and I tried to help him out. I came back during the 8th century when the Gospels were being formulated and being changed, and I actually tried to serve as a a high-ranking member of the Catholic Church. And I came back during what you would refer to as the Renaissance. So I tried to do my best. When God asks us to return, we always do, and we try to spread his words. We've been attempting to do this for many, many years, and we'll probably have to keep doing it many times in the future as well. Okay, you lived during the Golden Age of Greece. It's defined as beginning with the birth of Socrates in 470 B.C. to your death in 322 B.C. Why did God pick that time to send such brilliant minds to Greece? God determined that it was time for him to send back his servants so that the people would begin to think in a different way. The ancients did not believe in thinking about such things as philosophy or biology or many of the other subjects that we began to speak of. We all came back at a time when we thought when Greece could be influenced. Athens was the center of the intellectual world at the time. And we were sent back at, without a whole lot of overlapping years so that we could speak and think about the teachings of our predecessor and try to contribute new thought patterns to what they had spoken of. It was a very important time for the growth of the world. Had not we come back to try to generate a more civilized type of life programs, they would have remained in a much more barbaric form. What we did is try to give individuals the idea to think that intellect and intellectual abilities and thought would bring much better lives and would allow the individuals to find much more happiness. You were born in 384 BC. What was Greece like at the time of your birth? At the time of my birth, there was much upheaval. I was actually born in Macedonia, which is in the northern part of Greece, and there were many city-states. At that time, the city-states would fight among themselves, and there was much disagreement. We tried to bring more civility to the Greece population, but it was a very difficult time. Many of the people that were living in the area were slaves, that were captured in the different wars. Education was something that was reserved for the, for the well-to-do. It was, it was not an easy time to live. With all the violence that was going on, God certainly knew what he was doing when he sent us back to try to bring a different way of thinking into the lives of the people. Yes, could you tell us about your parents? My parents both were members of the medical profession. Now, the medical profession in those days was far, far different than what it is today. There was very little formal training, and they relied greatly on on speaking to the, the gods for help, There were certain things that they could do, but mostly it was just simply working with different type of plants as as medicinal products. So they did try to care for people, but as you know, our mortality rate was quite high 
especially among the infants and children. Would you tell us about your childhood in particular? My parents both died at an early age, and I was raised by an uncle. They were good people, and they were fairly well-to-do, so I had access to educational products. Obviously, books did not exist at that time, but there were scrolls that would have teachings of the people that came before us. And Socrates had lived before I was born, and there were individuals around that had studied under him, and I was lucky enough to be able to correspond and speak with many of those individuals. So then not many people got a formal education in those days? No, it was strictly the well-to-do. The slaves would never be given any type of education. The poor were not able to have access to it. So it was just basically a situation where well-to-do individuals had access to the teachings of the time. Okay, you were accepted into Plato's Academy in Athens at the age of 16. How did you gain entrance to such an institution? My uncle had done his best to give me access to information and especially to let me learn some of the teachings that Socrates had spoken of. He was introduced to Plato and he introduced me to him and spoke highly of my intellectual abilities. After being interviewed by Plato, he understood that even though I was only around 16 years of age, that I had quite a grasp for the teachings of the time. And he allowed me to join his academy and to teach and to learn from him and from those around him. What was it like to know Plato? It was an incredible opportunity. Obviously, the guides had arranged this before I returned. But Plato was a very, very interesting individual. He had well-formed concepts in his mind of what was taking place in the physical world around us. And he wanted to share the knowledge and he wanted to teach individuals how to use their brains and how to formulate concepts on their own. It was an incredible situation. I stayed with him for 20 years until his death, and he taught me much of the foundation of what I needed to know. That's amazing. Did you have psychic abilities? Yes. I would have lucid dreams where spirits would come to me and would speak of things. They would stimulate my mind for when I was awake, and they would give me ideas that I would pursue. So yes, I did have psychic abilities. I could not speak the words of spirits like Barry can, but I did have the ability to learn from spirits on the other side. Did you suffer any physical problems throughout your lifetime? My main problem was that I had digestional problems that I could not figure out how to solve. At the time, we were not familiar with the idea that upset stomachs were often caused by what we, what we ate and the acid that was formed in the stomach. But I what did suffer throughout my life with indigestion. A lot of it was from the food and the wine that we drank, but my stomach was a problem throughout my life. Okay, when Plato died in 348 BC, you left his academy. Why did you leave? I had studied under Plato for 20 years. 
I knew as much as anybody about his teachings, and when he passed, I wanted to become the head of his academy, but that role was given to another person. I felt that there would be nothing that I could learn from that individual, so I chose to leave and move on to other things. What do you consider the greatest thing that you learned from Plato? The greatest thing that I learned from Plato was how to use my mind. I learned that from observation, I could draw conclusions to what was taking place. He taught me how to think. He taught me that there were always answers to which we did not have access. He taught me that if I looked at the world around me, that there were many, many lessons that would be learned. I, he taught me that the study of plants and animals would allow me to come up with concepts that would change. He taught me that there were many things to pursue in life that would bring more happiness than the pursuit of wealth. He was just an unbelievable teacher and he opened the door of my mind that allowed me to proceed after his passing. Hmm. He was a great blessing to anybody that listened to him. Hey, could you tell us about your wife, Pythias? She was a lovely person. I truly did love her. She was an attractive lady and she did provide me with a child. She did not live as long as I would have hoped and she passed at a relatively early age. But she was a friend and a lover and I truly felt great emotion on her passing. Yeah. After she died, you developed a relationship with Herpolis. What was your relationship with her? Was she your slave or your wife? Herpolis was one of our slaves. We had several. We were not extremely wealthy, but we were well off. And she was a wonderful person. After my wife passed, I felt that I needed companionship and I was never formally married to her, but I treated her as a wife. I freed her of any, any type of slave relationship that could have taken place after my passing. And I did treat her as my wife, although we never had an official service. Okay, around 343 BC, you were asked to tutor Alexander the Great. Could you tell us about Alexander? Alexander was Macedonian. At that time, Athens and, Math and Macedonians were not at peace with each other. His father, Philip, sent word to me that he would like me to act as a tutor for Alexander. I went to the palace of Philip and I assumed the responsibilities of teaching the young Alexander. He was a very brilliant individual. He grasped concepts very rapidly. He felt that it was under his leadership that Macedonia would become a true world power. He had, he was driven by the desire to conquer many of the lands around him. 
He wanted to form a union with Athens, and he wanted to control all of the city-states that surrounded Macedonia. He was an incredible individual. He had the drive to succeed greater than anyone that I ever taught. He was a wonderful student. He started to do things as he became more powerful that I would disagree with. But as a student, he was an incredible individual. Okay, we have a question came in from one of our listeners. How did you develop your mathematical formulas? That was something that I would get assist from my lucid dreams. I studied all of the available concepts in mathematics that were available to me at the time. Plato had laid a foundation for some of the mathematical work, but I would think of different situations. I would try to apply mathematical solutions to situations that I was observing. And often I would have dreams that would help lead me to an answer. When you are in the initial stages of trying to put together concepts such as mathematics, you work in a very primitive fashion. And I know that many of my results were cons are now considered as being inaccurate or overly primitive. Okay, one of your greatest accomplishments was the creation of the Lyceum. Could you tell us about that? After the passing to Plato, I felt it was my responsibility to try to teach others. I was not allowed, since I was technically not a resident, I had to rent a facility, which I did, and I invited the more intelligent youth of the time to become members and to help to contribute in my experiments and for them to pay attention to some of the groundwork that I had laid. I had many very intelligent individuals come to me in the Lyceum. It was there that I did most of my writings. I wrote many scrolls. Many of them were destroyed. But I did a lot of good for many people when I formed the Lyceum. Okay. Could you describe your personal life as an adult for us, please? I was fairly well-to-do. I would make some enemies through my teachings. Being Macedonian, many of the people of Athens felt some resentment towards me. I tried to live a virtuous life. Virtue was something that I preached in my works. I told that virtue would lead to happiness, and I tried to follow the teachings. I've tried in my life to follow the, my teachings. Okay. Um, another question from one of our listeners. What is your opinion of the modern educational system? The mod modern educational system is consisting of many individuals that have let their political opinions 
get in the way of their historical teachings. The teaching of history is one of the greatest gifts that an intellectual person can have. It is imperative that you learn the lessons of the past. If you do not learn those lessons, then the mistakes of the past will most certainly be repeated. Today you're in a position that people are choosing what they want to teach as part of their life, of the lessons that they are showing their students. History should not be distorted. History should be taught that history should be taught as the events took place. There is a wealth of information to be learned from the mistakes of the past. Many of your teachers are directing students towards majors of learning that will not provide them with practical job experiences. Politics is something that should be removed from the teaching profession. I totally agree with you on all of that. What was your view on democracy? I felt that there were problems with democracy. I felt that all people, especially in my time, were not of equal intellect and did not have the ability to use their educations to do what was best for the people. In a democracy, all people are equal, and those that have had no education have the same power as the well-educated. I felt that it was only the educated that could do the best for leading the people. Okay. We find in your writings that you considered women to be inferior to men and that they must obey him and that there are still societies in this time that believe in that. What do you say to those societies now? In my time, women were not well educated and men were generally judged to be far superior to them. I now totally understand that men and women are intellectual equals and that the soul through reincarnation returns as both a man and a woman and that you will live many, many lifetimes with different sexual orientations. These societies that are holding women back, refusing to educate them, are totally wrong. Women deserve to be treated as equals with men, and they deserve to be educated the same as their male counterparts. I would hope that societies would become more modern and move towards the equalization of men and women. What was your view on poetry? In my day, poetry was a great way of communication. You could give others messages through poetry, and since there were no such things as written books, poetry was a relatively simple way to put down ideas and concepts. Today that has all changed and poetry is almost becoming a lost art. But in my day, poetry, poetry was very, very important for us. Okay, let's take a small break here. Uh, we will be back in around three minutes, and we will have many, many more questions for our guests. Channeling History Channeling History will return 
right after these brief messages. In order for the light to shine so brightly, the darkness must be present. Tune in every Monday at 10 o'clock for Dark Sun Rising on the Para-X Radio Network. Haunted Road Media comes an exciting new novel by author Marla Brooks. Soul Connection, a deadly obsession. Two lost souls ripped apart by murder in another century find each other again in the present only to discover that the murderer has followed them through time. Can their love save them or will history repeat itself? Find out in this captivating new novel by Marla Brooks. Soul Connection, a deadly obsession. Available now on Amazon.com and at BarnesandNoble.com. You've no doubt heard of Tango and Cash, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Perhaps it takes two to tango. Well, now, on the first and third Thursdays of each month, there's a show called Tango and Friends at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Para-X Radio Network with your host, Bruce Tango. And yes, there will be at least two to tango on each episode, sometimes even more. There's going to be lots of topics and lots of guests you'll all know and lots of support. Prizes. Tango and Friends, every first and third Thursday of the month at 8 p.m. right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Have you ever wondered what Jesus and his followers would say if you could receive their messages today? In his new book, Spirits Speak, Channeling Jesus and the Holy Spirits, channeler and author Barry Strom answers those questions for you. Using his gift of spirit communication, he brings you messages from such holy spirits as Moses, John the Baptist, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, Jesus, and even Mother Teresa and the Reverend Billy Graham. They discuss topics that are important for contemporary life in these troubled times. Spirits Speak, Channeling Jesus and the Holy Spirits is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other booksellers. Signed copies are available on the author's website, spiritspredict.com. After reading this book, you will never again say, what would Jesus say or do? Welcome back to Channeling History. Now, here are your hosts, Barry and Connie Strom. Okay, very good. Apparently, the computer gods have allowed us to come back on the air. So anyway, sorry for all that. Uh, I have no idea what caused it. So, Connie, let's try it again. <laughs> okay, right after the break, I had asked a question from our chat room, and I guess we'll get Aristotle to answer it again. Uh, it's regarding Sophia, the goddess of wisdom, and if she truly existed. No, Sophia never existed. She was like all the other Greek gods. They were ideas that had grown through time that there should be gods i can tell you that the only true god that exists is the one god okay in your time the greeks worshipped many gods did you believe in the one god at that time i thought that there had to be a source of everything that had happened i did not speak of it because it would become very unpopular among all of those that had worshipped so many of the Greek gods. So then you never taught the concept of one God? No, I never taught the concept of one God, but I did believe that there was a, there was a single source for everything that had happened, and that that source would probably result in a single God. Okay, what do you think of those who use philosophy to deny the existence of God and the life after death? They are totally wrong. They will learn that there is truly only a single God when they return over here. Many have distorted the use of philosophy and science and used it in an attempt to prove that God does not exist. I think they feel that if God exists, they are free to pursue whatever life or ideas they want to pursue. Many resent the idea that there truly is a God 
and that that God is responsible for all that happens. Okay, you played an important role in the early Islamic theology, and many of that religion refer to you as the first teacher. What is, what is your opinion of the modern Islamic religion? The members of the Islamic faith are wonderful people. They teach love, and they teach peace, and they teach getting along with one another, which is basically what God wants you to do. However, I would point out that there are segments of that religion that still treat women terribly. They feel that they are the only religion in the world, and they create violence and much disruption. I would tell those members that they are not correct and that they should follow the true teachings of God, which is simply love and coexistence. Your philosophy was talking about the concept of happiness. Now that you have passed on the other side, how can a human being, how, how can a human being achieve happiness on earth? The best way to achieve happiness on earth is to follow the teachings of, of God. If you show love, if you show, if you show charity, if you're good to others, if you treat them like you want to be treated, then you will find happiness. If you show anger, hatred, greed, then you will not, not be nearly as happy. It is a very simple thing. Follow the teachings of God, and you will find happiness. Yes, and back to our chat room. One of our questions, one of our listeners is saying, you are so eloquent, how would you describe heaven? I would describe heaven as the grandest of all possible concepts of finding happiness. It is the most magnificent place it is indescribable, and in heaven you can do things that will find that will lead your soul to the universal happiness that you desire. As you advance in serving God, you will find that the that the heaven that you are in, the realm, will become more unbelievable. And the human mind has no way of grasping the true grandeur. So would you say that that's the highest form of happiness that exists? The highest form of happiness for your soul is when you gain the highest realm of heaven. You will have a, a level of happiness that is indescribable. The way that you find happiness in an incarnate life is to follow the teachings that will lead you to happiness when you return to heaven. Okay, Aristotle, if you were alive today, how would your teachings change? If I was alive today, I would be relying much more on the advanced testing abilities, on the advanced knowledge, on your computers, uh, but I would still be using the advanced knowledge to tell others in an honest and simple manner how they can achieve the goals and happiness that their life would, would like to achieve. Okay. What is your advice to any thinker or philosopher searching for the universal truth? The universal te truth is following the teachings of God. Anything that diverts you from those teachings will divert you from finding the universal truth. Okay. If an individual spends most of his life studying philosophy and searching for the truth instead of making time to help others, does that contribute to the elevation of the soul? No. What contributes to the elevation of the soul is how you treat others and how you live your life. If you live a life of seclusion, 
and study, then you are obviously not helping others. And that is something that you will not be happy about. Okay. We have a listener who would like to know, is it possible to ask for your help or your opinion through prayer? You can ask for me to assist you. I, the guides will come to me and tell me that someone has asked through prayer for me to help them. And I will try to assist if possible. Do you think it's possible for members of society in our time to behave ethically without the existence of a religion or any belief in the existence of a creator? It is possible if you live, you can live a life according to the commandments of God without understanding, without even knowing about the commandments. If you live a good life, if you help others, then you will advance. It is possible, but religion and belief in God does give you the guidance that you need for true advancement. What is the meaning and purpose of logic? Logic is the concept that you use when you're trying to pursue the universal happiness. Logic tells you the difference between right and wrong, and logic leads you down a trail where you can solve ideas and concepts. There are many logical things, and there are many logical things, and the true intellectual mind can separate those two. Could you tell us the importance of virtue in all this? Without virtue, you cannot find happiness. Virtue is, in a single word, a combination of the teachings of God. Where God wants you to live a good life, treat others with love, virtue will help guide you towards those teachings. Okay. You made a lot of biological observations. Did you ever dissect a human body? It was taboo in our time, but I did make some minor inspections of bodies that had passed. You made a lot of observations about astronomy and the heavens. What you tell what would you tell humans about their exploration of space? I would tell humans that they have simply scratched the surface <laughs> of their explorations in space. The next thing that you will learn is that aliens truly exist and that they have been with you for many, many years and that they have assisted you for, for millions of years. You have much to learn. <laughs> We've been told that before. Okay, you believed that humans are political animals. What do you think of our current political system and the politicians in the United States? Your political system is being corrupted. The people that you are electing believe more in personal wealth, personal power, than they do in helping the people of your country. The fact that you allow individuals to stay in your Congress or Senate for a lifetime leads to corruption. You need to rethink your political system and assure that individuals that are sent to your capital have the best interest of the individuals at heart. You talked that you should combine observation with logic to make general claims. Is that still true today? Not necessarily. The depth of inspection that your technology now, now allows can better lead you down the road of logic. Many times, physical observations can lead to poor decisions. Okay, back to the chat room. 
Are there any natural supplements to help build our immunity against this COVID-19 that we're dealing with? There are many things that can help you to, to build your immune systems. Eat healthy, exercise, stay away from chemicals in your foods, eat things that you raise yourself, things that you know are truly organic. All of those things can help you defend against not only the new COVID virus, but all of the other things that are trying to infect your system. Now that you're on the other side, what would you tell us about the soul energy? I would tell you that soul energy is eternal. The human energies of, of an incarnate body have a very short period of time to exist. Your soul energy will come and go through many incarnate lifetimes, and your soul energy is forever. What would you tell us about dreams? Sometimes dreams are the only way that those of us on the other side can correspond with those of you living incarnate lives. Sometimes dreams are useless. Sometimes they are simply a mechanism for your body to, to rest. But in many instances, dreams can lead you to decisions that will be very healthy for your advancement. Okay, what was your cause of death? My cause of death was a type of stomach cancer. As I said earlier, throughout life I had had indigestion and digestive problems, and it was a cancer of my stomach that caused my death. And how were you judged when you arrived on the other side? I was judged very positively. I had brought many, many things to help others. I taught happiness. I taught many things that were meant to be taught and many things that God had sent me back to do. As in all of you, I had made some mistakes. I had done some things that I wished that I had not done. But all in all, I was judged as having a very good life. Yeah, what do you think about this lasting influence you've had on society? I mean, it's been a lot of years. I have been amazed by it. Many of my teachings have been lost. You only have like 25% of the things of which I spoke, and those things have been debated for thousands of years. I am honored, and I am shocked that my name is still mentioned so many times in your educational systems. Yeah. Modern authors have varied opinions about your works. What would you tell those guys? I would say that is fine. You do not have access to my total works. So the partial works that you have can lead to many, many different analysis and, and many, many different ideas about what I truly meant. So it is fine. You should discuss the ideas and you should treat them remembering that these concepts were formulated many thousands of years ago. Yeah. In our modern society, there is a wide difference between education and wisdom. How can a person acquire wisdom in our modern society? It is much more difficult for you to acquire wisdom in your modern educational system. It is a fact that much of your educational system is being manipulated towards political goals. What you need to do is study original works. Try to get a hold of texts of history that were, that were written oh, 50, 75 years ago, because you will find that they will include many of the truths that are being taken from the teachings that you're learning today. Try to sort out what is true and what is not. Many of your, many of your communication or news systems are not giving you the full 
truth of what is taking place. Listen to multiple sources. Do not just listen to the sources of your own political beliefs. If you listen to many, many different sources, you should be able to sort out the truth. But it is truly very difficult. Yeah. We've got one last question out of the chat room. If our souls have mod- live multiple lifetimes, why can we not remember them? The whole purpose of a new lifetime is that you start anew on a path that you have selected. If you had access to all the information, then you would not be able to follow the unique life plan that has been selected for you. That is why your minds are clear when you return. Okay, are you a member of the soul family of God? Yes. I have returned many, many times to serve God, and each time that I returned, my mind was wiped clear and I was given a unique life path to be followed. But I have served God many, many times, and I will serve Him many times in the future. Uh, It's a gift to all of us. Do you have a final message for us, Aristotle? Yes. I would like to thank you for allowing me to speak to you. I want you to understand that you now have many, many gifts for searching for the truth. However, the truth is very difficult to find in your modern society. You have to be wise and you have to sort through the multiple messages that you are hearing. The truth is out there, but you need to find it. You're going to find that your technological advancements are just beginning. As you learn to advance, you will have many, many messages and many, many techniques that you can use that were never available to any of us that lived in ancient times. It is up to each of you to use the gifts that have been given to you. It is essential that you follow the teachings of God, that you learn to show love, and that you learn to coexist with one another. You now have company countries that hate you with weapons of mass destruction. They can wipe humanity from the earth. You must learn to coexist. Many of you will have differences on earth, but you will find when you return to heaven that all are equal. I hope that you will use the minds that God has given you to determine paths that will lead you closer to his teachings. The closer you come to his teachings, the faster you will learn and the more gifts that you will be given. If it becomes inevitable that humans are destroyed, then that will be the result of your free will. Use your minds to advance your culture. There is still plenty of time for you to learn the lessons and to do what you need to do in the future. So I thank you for allowing me to come through tonight. I hope that you, some of my words will sink in and that may help you to advance. So good night, and thank you so much. Aristotle, thank you. I've got no trouble seeing why God keeps sending you back. We need you again. Thank you. Okay, next week we're going to be doing a change of pace. We're going to be interviewing the American president and military general Dwight Eisenhower. He was the military leader that led us through World War II, and he's going to be an extremely interesting guest. You can submit questions or recommendations for future shows through our email, channelinghistoryonparax at gmail.com. My new book, Channeling History or Channeling Jesus and the Holy Spirit, is available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. You can download it on Kindle. That's a very easy way to get the book in foreign countries. Signed copies are only available on my website, spiritspredict.com. And words of God, then and now.com. All our shows are available on Podomatic, iTunes, Spotify to download or just listen. Everything that we do, including our new show, 
A weekly message from Jesus is available on my YouTube channel, and that's in my name, Barry Strong. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. I'm sorry we had another technical glitch. I will try to clean it up on the tape and the videos or the audio that we post. Please join us on Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the Para-X Radio Network. Good night, everybody. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Thanks for listening to Channeling History. Tune in again next week for another electrifying episode as we never know who will make an appearance or who will come through the portal. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2020. Our story begins by Kevin McLeod, licensed through Incompetech.com.